What is up guys, High Velocity here, back again with another video, and as promised, I'm going to do a PID tutorial video. So I'm going to just go over a little bit on um, the basics of PIDs. Um, this is a difficult video to do. Um, I There's a reason why it's been so long. I've had a lot of requests um, to do this video, but I just really wanted to do it in a way that could help you guys out. So. Um, I'm focusing this video towards the more beginner guys. Um, I'm going to do another video um, at a later date, um, hopefully later this week. Um, who knows, it may even be tonight. I, I, I don't really know. I've been trying to push as many videos out as I can. Uh, but I'm going to do another video on TPA for KISS. Um, there's some... Um, a lot of adjustment to TPA and I think a lot of people don't understand exactly what you are capable of doing or why you would do it um, to adjust your TPA settings. So I'm going to go over a little bit on that as well in a different video, but for this video I'm going to just go over the basics of PID tuning, uh, what PID does to a quadcopter, the way I tune it on my quadcopter, and also talk a little bit about how rates can uh, change what your PIDs need to be. Um, a little bit about how uh, you could have the exact same quadcopter, but when you were running slower rates, everything was great, everything worked fine, but then you stepped up to these faster rates and now all of a sudden you're starting to have weird issues and oscillations. So um, I'm gonna go over all that stuff and we're just gonna hop on over to the GUI and I'm going to uh, just talk about it and explain a little bit about PIDs. So hopefully this video helps you guys out. Enjoy. Alright guys, so here we are in the KISS GUI. Um, I'm using the new version 1.15.6 which requires the new version 1.2 firmware. Um, if you haven't upgraded, I highly recommend doing it. I also recommend upgrading your Tyrannus to the new 2.2 um, companion or OpenTX, uh, which allows you to use the Lua script that will allow you to tune through your radio using the telemetry. So um, I'm going to do a video on that as well, uh, how to upgrade your radio and get it all set up to do the Lua script. Um, but I'm also going to do another video, like I said, on TPA. But Anyways, let's hop on in here and um, you'll see that I'm on COM3. You should see this whenever you plug in. You should see a COM port of some kind. If not, your board isn't being recognized by your computer. So, But let's go ahead and connect. So first thing I'm going to uh, talk about is what P, I, and D do on a quadcopter. I'm not going to get too technical into the whole what they actually stand for. I'm just going to tell you guys what they do and make this as easy for you guys as possible. Um, as you can see, these are not uh, default PIDs. Um, this is actually my uh, KISS 5 inch with uh, the steel uh, TBS Silk Edition motors. Um, the uh, It's Mr. Steel's motors. They're awesome motors. I highly recommend them if you're flying freestyle. Um, and then uh, obviously it's on KISS flight controller and it has KISS 24 amp race ESCs. Um, and then I'm running a uh, GoPro Hero Session, um, the Hero 5 Session uh, camera, as well as a 1300 adrenaline pack. So if you have a setup that's roughly that weight and you're using this fast of rates or slower, then you can go ahead and try these settings and they may work okay for you. Um, but there's a lot that it'll change what PIDs you need and um, like I'm running some custom TPA so these settings aren't going to exactly work for you unless you have everything. So, but we're going to hop in here, we're going to talk about what P, P does, I does, D does, we're going to talk a little bit about how rates affect your PIDs, um, I'll talk a little bit about what the basic TPA does, and then I will go over how I tune. So, First things first, P. Um, we're just going to say that P is power. Um, basically, P is the amount of power you can give to the PID controller to achieve a desired angle. So say you rotate 360 degrees, which would be a full roll. 
Um, that's what your stick command was. That's what the PID controller is being commanded to do. The uh, P is how much available power can it send to your motors to get to that desired degree of rotation. If there's too much power, it will overshoot. It'll go to 380 and then it'll try to come back and it'll overshoot again and go to like 340 or 350 and it'll keep overshooting until it finally pulls the air down enough to settle at the right angle. That is an oscillation. Um, more than likely that oscillation is because you have too much P. Um, so P is the amount of available power to the pit controller to, to achieve your desired rotation. Uh, D works like a dampener or a shock on a car. Um, D will dampen P to keep that oscillation from running away and getting too out of hand. It can also keep it from happening in the first place, but because it works like a dampener, it's going to pull away the um, instant connected feel by raising P up. So you want to try to use a little amount of D as possible, but there are definitely times when you need to use D. And then I works as kind of like a um, assistant to P. So it kind of assists P in a certain sense. Um, mainly what I is used for is if the wind is blowing um, and the uh, quad starts to be pulled away and drifted by the wind, it will at least maintain and hold its angle. Uh, it won't like blow over when the wind hits it. Um, in a freestyle or racing quad, a lot of times people would, will increase I to give it a more um, locked into position feel, um, make it a little bit more stable out of quick maneuvers. Um, but you can definitely get too carried away and add too much I. So I works as kind of an assistant to P. Um, other things that will affect how you adjust these is if you don't have enough P and you keep raising I because it keeps wanting to drift out of angle, um, it, it you need more P because I works as an assistant to P. And if there's just not enough P, then you can crank I up or you'll have to really go high before you achieve what I actually does, but it still doesn't fix the fact that P is too low. Um, sometimes if P, there are times where P could be too low uh, to uh, help assist I or make I to where it can be at a decent number, um, but you still are getting like pitch up or pitch down problems um, and you're not getting oscillations. Well, sometimes if you need to raise P and raise D to dampen P to have enough available P to where I can do its job properly. So there's a lot to it and that's why this video has been such a long uh, time for me to make it is because I really wanted to go through things and figure out a way to explain this in a way that will help uh, more of the novice guys getting into the hobby that want to learn they're at the limit or at the uh, point where they want to learn how to tune their PIDs but they don't want to be completely overwhelmed. They just want to know what they need to change to get where they need to be. So um, that is basically how the PIDs work. P is the available power, D dampens that available power, and I assists that available power. Um, TPA, um, I'm not going to go too far into that, but basically the only time you'll need to adjust TPA is if you um, are getting no oscillations out of flips and rolls, but you are getting a slight oscillation at full throttle moving forward. Not like prop wash or anything, you're just flying forward at full throttle and you're getting a slight vibration. Basically that means P is too high um, and you need to decrease it. If it's a left to right oscillation, if your camera movement is vibrating left to right, that means yaw P is just simply too high. Just decrease yaw P, don't add TPA to get rid of that. Um, I normally increase yaw P until I get a little bit of vibration and then I'll decrease it and add a little bit of D as a safety almost. So that is what your P, I, and D does. Again, rates affect what these numbers need to be. If you have really fast rates, you're going to need less P and more D. 
Um, if you have really slow rates, you can get away with more P and less D. Um, so keep that in mind when copying other people's PIDs. If you have the exact same setup, but you're running faster rates and you copy their PIDs, they're going to be too high. If you have slower rates than them and you copy your, their PIDs, you could probably get away with it. So the only other thing I'm going to talk about before I go into what how I tune is the low pass filter. Um, the low pass filter, you always want to have this off if you can. Um, if you're getting a weird vibration that just doesn't go away no matter what you do over here, then you can experiment with raising this around, uh, raising this up, uh, which the higher uh, high is the least amount of filtering and very low is the most amount of filtering. I know it's kind of confusing, but if they just put the actual numbers in here, or at least put the numbers next to it so it made a little bit more sense, that would be great, but that's what it is. So hot, off is off. This is the least amount of filtering before going off, and this is the most amount of filtering. Uh, so obviously you want to stay off or down here if you can. Um, but anyways, the uh, next thing I want to go over is your, uh, I'm just going to go over how I tune. So uh, basically the way I tune is I tune my P's first, then I tune D, and then I tune I. I tune line of sight for pitch and uh, roll and pitch, um, and then I tune y'all last after roll and pitch is perfect. Um, the way I tune is I do, I, I take default PIDs, I go out, I do a short little flight of flips and rolls, and if I'm getting no uh, oscillations, but I can just feel that it's not connected to the sticks, it doesn't feel tight, then I will go in and I will um, experiment and mess around with um, increasing them. So I'll then start increasing P for roll and just do rolls. All I'll do is full rolls um, and keep increasing P until I get oscillations. When I get oscillations or overshoot, I'll stop. Um, and then I'll, if it's just the slightest amount of overshoot, I'll then try adding D and I to get rid of it. Um, if that's not really helping any, I'll then decrease uh, P. And what I mean by not helping any is you don't want to stray too far away from the default numbers on I and D. You want to try to stay as close to those defaults as you can. Um, as you can see, default is uh, I'm at 12 and the default for D is 10. So you don't want to stray too far away from the defaults if you can. Um, but different setups require different things. So once I have roll tuned, I will then match my pitch to roll and fly that. And more than likely, I'm going to have to increase from that point anyways. Um, so then I'll do the same thing. I'll start increasing P for pitch. I'll do full front flips or back flips or, and you know, usually both and keep doing that until I get a slight overshoot. And then same thing, increase D and I. Um, to where I can get it to where it goes away. If it doesn't, then I'll decrease P a little bit um, to fix it, to get rid of the oscillation or the overshoot. Um, and usually P for everything is going to be a little bit higher than roll. I mean, uh, um, your PIDs for pitch are always gonna be a little bit higher than roll unless you're using a stretched X and uh, that, that things are, you know, get a little bit different because of how the arms are placed and the way the leverage works. So, and then as far as yaw goes, I just simply go out and do fast forward flight and keep increasing yaw uh, P until I get a slight oscillation left and right, and then I'll decrease it to get rid of it, and then I will add a little bit of D as a safety measure. So, hopefully this helps you guys out and uh, gets you guys moving in the right direction. Uh, stay tuned to my channel. I'm going to do another video on custom TPA and how to tune TPA to get a more locked in feel on a uh, freestyle rig um, and may even help you on a racing rig depending on how you apply it um, as well as do a video on the OpenTX 2.2 um, and show you guys how to get um, the 
Lewis scripts working so you can tune from your Tyrannus. So hopefully this helped you guys out and uh, stay tuned to the channel. Make sure you like this video and please subscribe.